Hello friends and welcome to another episode of My Bucket List Day. So today is for the newbies or the beginners. The people like me. The people that are just getting started in this. I don't care if you're a full-timer, a part-timer, a weekend warrior, or if you're in a fifth wheel, a travel trailer, a Class A, Class C, Super C, doesn't matter. This video is for all of you that are starting off new and you're not quite sure what to do, what to get, and that type of thing. So I'm going to show you the basics, the very bare bone basics of the things that you're going to need to get started and have fun out on the road with your RV. So we're going to have a lot of fun today going over all of that stuff. But I'd like to talk about liking and subscribing to this channel. As all of you know, YouTube, they have all these algorithms and things like that that uh, help my channel. And with all of your help, we can make it even better so I can bring you all this wonderful content. So all I need to do is hit that like button and hit that subscribe button. And uh, if you'd like to know when I'm bringing out a next video, when you hit that sub subscribe button, hit the little bell next to that. That'll notify you each time I launch a new video. But before we get into the rest of the video, let's watch this intro. Welcome back. So now, as a newbie, I thought it'd be uh, a good PSA, public service announcement, to uh, share with all of you out there that might be newbies and might be beginners of things that you're going to need when you first start out. I'm going to show you some things that you must have just to get started. So the first thing you need to have is a fresh water garden hose or fresh water hose now this one is one of three that I've got and uh, I always have a backup just because you never know if you need to go a little further away from your rig to wherever the water source is so I have two 25 footers then I've got a third one just as a backup for a backup so gotta have that the second thing you're gonna need is these Y connectors it's just a little shutoff valve Y connector that you put on the tap at the source at the RV park. You need to connect that first, obviously. And you'll notice in all my videos, I talk about these guys. They're quick disconnects. These are not a must, but I highly recommend them. You simply pull back the collar and they come apart. I got them on every hose in my rig. So after that, you're going to need a filter. This is a 20 micron filter. I highly recommend you get at least this. 20 micron filter will basically clean out most of the particles that will come out of these RV parts. And many of them, as I already mentioned in a previous video, if you haven't seen it, I'll have a, a link up here, actually, of that video. So you can get a detailed look at the water system, or the filter system I put in here with the water softener to uh, have good quality drinking water in your rig. But when you're just starting out, don't need all that. Uh, you can do bottled water or use a Berkey or something like that. But anyway, must have a filter. It also helps keep all the hard, hard water and stuff from building up faster on your pump and your faucets and things like that. So again, I got the quick disconnects. Then after that, you're going to need some type of sewer connection. Now this stupid thing, as you've heard me say many, many times, only use it as a backup. I don't use those at all. Instead, I use a FlowJet macerator pump. And I connect it to a regular garden hose. And again, I use the Quick Connects to connect it to make it simple. So instead of using that stinky slinky that is a mess, you gotta put on gloves, and every time you wanna drain your water or your black tank, your gray tanks, it's just a nightmare. I don't wanna mess with that. 
Now everybody says, oh, that's all you need is a stinky slinky, but I don't care for full-timer, part-timer, weekend wire. Get the flow jet. I've only got one, so I'm gonna actually take the camera over there to show it to you. This is the flow jet macerator pump that I was talking about. And you'll see that the uh, waste hose is connected to that and connected to the sewer pipe uh, here at the RV park. But this will basically pump all of your black, all of your gray water out at 12 gallons per minute. And you'll, I don't have to put on rubber gloves. It is clean, it's simple, it cleans itself, primes itself. There's, everything is automatic pretty much. All I do is put it on and I'm done. Now obviously I can't travel while it's on here so I put it on each time I park and set up. You'll notice there's a clear lens or see-through lens right at the beginning. I put that there so I can see what business is going on and when everything is done and over. But that's the macerator. No stinky slinky for me and this is a must-have for all of you. Um, if you want to hassle with the stinky slinky, be my guest and use technology to make life easier. This is what I recommend and you keep the stinky slinky only for a backup. Highly recommend it. Yes, it's a couple hundred dollars. Um, but it sure saves a lot of hassle when it comes to cleaning out your gray and your black tank. Now, as far as your power connection, your unit should have came with a power cord, a 30 amp or 50 amp power connection. And one of the most important things you're going to need, again, whether you're a part-time, weekender, full-timer, you need to have a surge protector at the very minimum for your power. A lot of these RV parks have unstable power. Uh, there are thunderstorms that can cause electrical uh, surges and things like that. So you must get a surge protector. If you don't have one and you get something that comes through that power cord, messes up everything in the rig, then you got a big problem, big expensive problem. I'll show you that here in a second too, because I've only got one of those. This is the surge protector that I use, made by Progressive Industries. As you see, it's got the little LED lights, the green and blue lights, indicating both sides of the 50 amp power is good. Now what I do is I plug this in before I plug it into my rig and test the power, test the box, make sure the power is good. If I get a green and blue light, I'm good to go on both sides. If I have any other color, got a problem. But we'll get into that in another episode. So as far as hardware is concerned, that's really all you need. Now there's a list of all of these things on my website and I'll have a link here below exactly how to get to that website and it lists not only these products but all the other products that I've purchased and used and found beneficial for my rig. Some of them may be beneficial to you too. Take a look. You might find something you like. So that's pretty much it on the basics of equipment that you're going to need for getting set up. So there's one more thing you're going to need to bring along with you that is a very big must and that is the right attitude. I can't tell you how many times, no matter where you are or what you're doing, you're going to have a breakdown. Whether it be something simple like molding popping off, or major like uh, brake failure in your trailer. Or uh, if you've got a Class A, your engine won't start. You're always going to have issues in the RV world. I can't tell you that you're going to find a rig that never breaks down. That's I've never heard of it. That's the, uh, the unicorn, if you will. Um, there's always something. So, you got to come in with the right attitude, understanding that. If you don't have the mechanical ability, well, you might struggle a little bit. Fortunately, most campgrounds have very friendly neighbors that are often willing to help everybody on anything. I can't tell you how many times I see somebody struggling with something, I walk over, ask them what's going on, and they are having an issue, they don't quite know how to handle it or fix it, I jump right in, help them take care of the problem, and we, they move on. Um, so it's... Uh, something that you'll find in most campgrounds. So if you are mechanically inclined, uh, don't be afraid to offer some help to somebody. You know, obviously ask, <laughs> don't just jump in. So just accept that. You just come in with the right attitude, understanding it. So you have the patience and you know it's coming. So don't be surprised by it, because it is coming. You just may not know when, and it will happen at the worst time. Um, now, let's talk about the things that are not equipment, but you gotta have, whether you're full-time, part-time, weekend warriors, and that is a mobile app or the mobile apps that I use 
that you should download too to help you find campgrounds, help you find hiking areas, help you find fuel stops, things of that nature. Also help you plan your route. So the mobile apps that I'm recommending, there's really only two of them. Uh, that is RV Life and The Dirt. The reason I'm selecting both of these is The Dirt uh, is fairly new. They just did an upgrade. They have a couple great features in there and uh, they set it up as kind of a gamification, if you will. You get awards and prizes for putting reviews, reviews, reviews about other campsites um, once you visit them. And also gives you a few other perks that are, are kind of interesting. Uh, I'm still playing around with it and getting to know it, and I'll have a full review on it at some later video. But the primary one that I use is RV Life. And RV Life, I believe, put some arrangement or has some arrangement with the RV Trip Wizard, which is another app that I used to use, but now they're combined into one. Um, so I have the RV Life Pro version. I think it's $49 a year, and you get uh, a trip manager, trip wizard, if you will and uh, it tells you where the fuel stops are. You put in your rig information and it knows pretty much what your fuel economy is going to be and when you need to start looking for fuel and things of that nature. It also does a great job of finding RV parks and areas. You just put in your parameters and it'll find parks based on that. Um, the one thing it doesn't have, in fact, I have yet to find a, an app out there that does this, which would be huge if some of these app companies would do this. Um, Yes, I know, everybody's laughing who really knows me because this is what I used to do for a living. But, and that is create technology and mobile apps. But some of you guys out there that have these apps, you need to make it something like an Expedia or a Travelocity. So I can pick an area, put in the dates I wanna be there, that knows my rig information, and then finds available campsites for me. Rather than me have to go to every single campground, check it out, see if I'll fit, then, see if there's availability for the dates I want to be there. That's backwards. It should be the other way around. But I understand every campground's got a different booking system and every campground does it, has a different site and there's no standards with its industry. However, there's an opportunity for you guys. If you've got a good marketing group and you've got great uh, app developers, make it just like an Expedia or Expedia. Maybe you want to move into the camping business. Uh, it, either way, it would be a big opportunity for somebody out there. So, those are the two apps that I use. Um, there's a couple apps that I use for hiking and mountain biking and things like that, and I'll cover that in another video. But this is really for newbies and beginners who's starting out, whether you're a full-timer, part-timer, weekend warrior, whatever. These are just the bare essentials that you're gonna need for all of this. And what I found I needed right away when I got out of there, so. When do you stop being a newbie? That's a good question. Actually, everybody out there that's watching, tell me, when do you stop being a newbie? I'd like to know. Okay, now it's time to play the Patriot Games. Now let's roll the little video and you tell me where this is at. So do you think you know where that one is? Don't forget, don't put it in the comments below. Click the link below that says contest page and enter your answer there, or your guess, I should say. And good luck to you. From the comments, I'm hearing a lot of you are having a lot of fun doing this, and that was what this is all about. I'm still working on all the prizes that are gonna be part of this package. Um, hopefully soon I'll get it all wrapped up and then I'll be able to announce what the prize package is going to be or the multiple prize packages. I'll give you a little hint, it's not going to be just one prize for all. There's going to be multiple prize packages. I appreciate all of you watching. I hope all of you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and the little bell icon to notify you when the next episode is going to be. That really helps me a lot and I appreciate all of you that have done so, so far. I guess that's it for this episode. Thank you for watching. Make it a great day. Goodbye.